Mm. Another thing. Mm -hmm. I've been looking at your beard. Have you? Is it real? Yeah. Only don't pull it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it looks good. Hey, how come you grew it? Oh, I don't know. I got tired of shaving. <laughs> hey, I, you know, I once thought of growing a beard. Did you? What mm. happened? Well, I started to, you know, feel so crummy. Yeah. And people start to look at you. Oh, well, don't worry about people. Well, I don't really worry about them. See, I kind of do what I want anyway. <laughs> I see your father's in very good company. Uh-oh. Well, that's all right. That creep just likes to pick on girls, anyway. I wish Pop would move away from him. Look, do you I don't trust him at all. Do you want me to go over and uh, steer your father away from him? No. No, I'd rather you didn't get involved either. Well, I don't think there's going to be any problem. His buddy is here to quiet things down. I wish Pop would move away from him. OK. So he hated his mother. And he carried his security blanket until he was 19. What else does he do? <laughs> well, you just won't believe he's basically good. Like all people. Not for a minute. But I'm curious. You're different from him, and yet you travel with him. Why? Well, now there are some people you think you could never get close to, with whom you have absolutely nothing in common. And then suddenly, fate throws you together. Well, we've been around a bit. Been on a few voyages together. He's a good lad, you know. Hard worker. If he likes you, he'll do anything in the world for you. <laughs> you missed your calling. You should have been a social worker. <laughs> <laughs> How long are you planning to stay in town? But I don't know yet. Just visiting? Just visiting. Nothing more? Nothing more. Your presence up at Collinwood is Caused some discomfort with several of my friends. Oh, now I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I'm sure I've been very genial and pleasant to everyone. Of course, I can understand their feelings about my friend. No, it goes deeper than that. That you have another motive for being there. Something that uh, gives you the run of the house. <laughs> is that what I've got? The run of the house, huh? Well, whatever it is. I just want you to know that I... Uh, like those people, and I'm worried about those people up at Colin. I keep that in mind. But I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Cheers. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. No, no, I'm not. You're an artist? You paint pictures? Yes, yes, without the use of numbers. Well, how do you like that? I never met an artist before. Hey, that's why you grow that beard. Well, no. I hear all artists is crazy. That's not true. Well, sure it is. You got to be crazy to do that kind of stuff. Do you do all them lines and drip paint and do cartoons? No, I just uh, paint whatever I see in this vicinity. Uh-huh. Uh, do you make any dough at it? Oh, well, just about enough to get by on. Then why don't you get wise and paint that other stuff that makes dough? I'm uh, not interested. Hey, uh, do you paint girls? Let's uh, talk about something else, I, huh? I, I want to know if you have models. Maggie, would you uh, excuse me for a minute? I'm supposed to call the night supervisor. What's the trouble? Nothing, nothing. One of the boats uh, had engine trouble and uh, was late getting in. I'll just take a second. Look, you uh, you stay put till I get back. Yes. Come on, tell me about the models. I don't use them, I'm telling you. Come on, I heard all about you artists. I hear stories. Excuse me. Well, hello there. Pop, we're waiting for you. Come on. Hey, hey wait a minute. This your daughter? That's right. Well, you got a mighty nice looking family. Hey, how about let me buy you that drink you wouldn't have before? No, thank you. Come on, we have to go. Oh, I get it. Uh, you don't want him to talk to me, that is? No. Uh, I know when I'm getting the business. Uh, you think it's something else, huh? Think it's special, too good for words, huh? Let me tell you, you're nothing special, nothing special at all. Now listen, you just take uh, it easy, buddy. And your old man here, he's worse than you are. Crazy old artist painting pictures no one will buy. Now listen here. Uh, hey, uh, your daughter have a model for you? Uh, she looks like she could be a model, nice built. Watch your mouth. Hey, now I'll say whatever I want to say. You got that? 
You say whatever you want to say, well, say it to me. Come on, Pop. Whoa, it's Mr. Burke Devlin. You've got something on your mind? This is a great opportunity. Speak up. Come on, Wait. Wait. Uh, Mr. Burke Devlin wants me to speak up. Come on, Loomis. Speak up, because you'll be gone in ten seconds. Where will I be gone to? Wherever you came from. Who's going to send me there? I am. You know, you terrify me half to death. You see, you've caused everybody a lot of trouble in this town, but this is the end of it, right now. That's pretty big talk. I can do more than talk. You think you're a pretty big man in this town, don't you? Come on, no. Oh, no! No! No, I get a kick out of these guys who act like they're so clean. When all the time they're trying to cover up their dirt. There's the door. If you're smart, you'll walk out of it. If you're not, you'll be carried out. Atta boy. Now you're talking like a real ex-con. You're dead, jailbird. Cool it, Bob. I'll handle this punk. to get your buddy out of town, fast. Because if you don't, I'm coming after both of you. Burke, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm okay. How did that start? I don't know. Oh, boy. The guy's been yeah. asking for it for weeks anyway. Yeah? Didn't hurt yourself. Somebody's finally had forgiveness. Are you all right? I'm gonna kill him. Oh, no, don't start talking like that. I mean it. It won't do any good, Willie. I don't care. Well, you know you've got to get out of town now. I'm gonna get Devlin. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Do anything you like with Devlin. I want you to get even. But please wait until we get the money. Or doesn't that make sense? Yeah. All right. Now you leave. And it'll take the pressure off me. Then, I'll be coming back for him. But you've got to go right away, Willie. Okay. But I'm not going unless I get enough dough. And I mean enough. I'll get it. I'll get it. Oh, good morning, good morning. Well, I was greeted by Mrs. Johnson with the glad news that you wanted to see me. I certainly do. But I doubt that if what I have to say you'll, fi you'll find very cheerful. I want your friend out of Collinwood and away from Collins Port. Is that clear? <laughs> I had an idea that's what you were going to say. Well, I've said it and I mean it. Because, you know, I'm not used to being given orders. I don't care. Well, I expect that news has reached you of that unfortunate fight last night in town between my friend Willie and Mr. Devlin. Willie has absolutely no control. I should never have let him stay here one minute when I found out what he tried to do to Carolyn. He must leave Collinwood as soon as possible. And if he doesn't... Ah, now, there's no need to threaten, Elizabeth. I agree with you completely. What? I said I agree with you completely. As far as I am concerned, Willie is no longer a friend of mine. What are you really saying? <laughs> Dear Liz... Always so suspicious. At this time, your suspicions are completely unfounded. Willie will very soon be out of Collingwood and away from Collinsport. Well, 
You know how eager I've always been to do whatever you ask. Well then, I consider the matter settled. Now if you'll excuse me. Uh, one moment, Elizabeth. What is it? I'm afraid the matter isn't quite settled. If Willie is to leave, he must have the means to leave. If you or Willie expect to be bribed to see that he goes, the answer is no. Bribe? What an ugly word. Well, then don't force me to use it. All right, then. I won't. Now, my approach to this is completely practical. Now, you see, Willie can't get from here to wherever he's going without money. You want Willie to leave. <laughs> I think it's only fair that you should furnish the necessary money. I'll give you the bus fare from here to Bangor. <laughs> no, I'm afraid that won't do. After all, Willie should be compensated for his uh, inconvenience. Then you are asking for a bribe. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm asking for a thousand dollars. You can ask all you like, but you won't get it. But I thought you wanted Willie to leave. I refuse to be involved in this sordid business. Well, I don't know that you're in a position to refuse, Elizabeth. And it might help to remind you that this is not the first time you've involved yourself in something slightly sordid. I forbid you to keep bringing that up. But you keep making it necessary. I won't be forced this way. <gasps> you're a beautiful pin. Oh, you've broken the clasp. Never mind the pin. I'm not giving you any money. It's beautiful. May I have it, please? Why, yes. Certainly. Did you hear what I said about the money? Yes. But I'm afraid I must insist. Insist all you like. The answer is no. Oh, no, Liz, why do you say that? You know you're going to give me the money. I'm not, and that's final. Well, then. Willie does not leave Collinwood. He most certainly does. And what'll you do if he doesn't? I'll call the police. And when they're here, feel perfectly free to tell them whatever you like. Ah, now, you know you don't mean that. Don't I? You seem to forget that man is a threat to my family. A violent man with no control. It's come to a point when I... I must stop thinking of myself. You're not bluffing, are you? I promise you, I'm not. All right, then. Make it 500 instead of 1,000. Not one cent. But Willie won't leave without the money. He'll force us to call the police. Something neither of us really wants. So come on, Liz. If $500 can resolve an untenable situation, then give it to him and get it over with. It's a small price to pay for so great a convenience. Well, now, Liz, you're a businesswoman. Think of it in terms of profit gained for money spent. Five hundred dollars? Five hundred. Cash. And he'll be gone? Gone. Forgotten. Is it a deal? I'll get the money. You're being very sensible. Am I? No respect for the wounded. Yes, well, I find it difficult to sympathize with such stupidity myself. Oh, who's stupid? Well, now you'll have to agree that it was not particularly intelligent for you to get involved in a public brawl. No. I should have done it privately with no one looking. Just simply killed him. I probably still will. I'm afraid you'll lack the opportunity. I'll find the opportunity. Lee Stoddard is giving me $500. You're to take it and get out of here as soon as possible. Hmm? Are you kidding? Well, I'm not leaving here, not with a measly 500. Well, a 500 is not measly compared to what you have right now, which is exactly nothing. It's measly compared to what I came to get. Compared to what you might have gotten. If you'd only behaved yourself. Nobody threatens me the way Devlin did. Now, Mrs. Stoddard is irreversible on the subject. Either you take the money and leave, or she calls the police. Letter. Now, you know you don't mean that. I do. And I know you can fix it so I can stay. I if can't. If you really want I to. can't. You've made it impossible. Well, the only thing to do now is take the money and leave. It's the only thing to do under the circumstances. I'll try to get you some more. Send it on to you. Maybe I can fix it so you can come back. But 
right now. The only thing to do is to clear out. Or maybe, or maybe you're right. What? You leave. Well, I guess I don't have any choice. You get me the 500 and I'm as good as gone. Good. Now you can start packing your things right now. In a minute. Now, Willie. Well, can I just finish my coffee in here? Yeah, I always like this kind of room. You haven't the time to waste. Well, I won't waste it. I'll be ready to go by the time you get the money. pin with the diamonds around it? Oh, the one your great-grandmother gave to you when you were 18? That's the one. Have you seen it anywhere? No. The last time I saw it was when you wore it for your birthday. Well, I had it on this morning. The clasp was broken. You mean it could have fallen off anywhere? Oh, I don't think so. I, I seem to remember... Never mind, David. I think I know where it is. In fact, I'm sure I do. my pin, please. I beg your pardon. The pin you retrieved so gallantly for me in the drawing room. But I gave it back to you. And I put it on the table. Well, then, it must still be there. You know perfectly well it isn't. Oh, come on now, Liz. Well, you don't think I'd do a silly thing like that. Well, if you didn't, I'm sure you know who did. I'd like you to get it for me immediately. Are you sure it's not still there? Positive. And I should remind you that if it really is missing, I must notify the insurance company immediately, and they'll send investigators out. Well, I doubt that'll be necessary. Please see that it isn't. <laughs> 